All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. We got Thursday night football week number three, New York Jets taking on the New England Patriots. In today's video, we're going to go through this game. I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. I have a few player props that I want to throw your way as well. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video for any final plays that are locked in or any ads or updates or anything like that. Everything that I actually lock in myself will be for free in the pinned comments. So make sure to check that out. In terms of week two in the NFL we actually fare pretty well we go two and one Thursday night and that lo one loss was actually just a quarter unit play so we love to see that three and three on Sunday but we cashed the nice plus 155 of JK Dobbins unfortunately Monday night football rolls around and we do take a little bit off the top there but nonetheless still picked up I think just over a unit in week number two so we'll take that it's nothing compared to our uh 17 and three week number one but I told you guys last week I don't think we'll ever be able to re redo that because that was absolutely absurd. But let's hope to start this week off nicely on Thursday night. Kind of want to start with the total. Before we do that, guys, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Let me know what you're rolling with in the comments. I always love to see what people are rolling with because there's a lot of great plays in the comments that I don't bring up or think of or even think to look at myself. So help some other people out there, guys. Go ahead and drop your favorite plays in the comments and like the ones that you think are good plays in the comments. But yeah, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I want to start with the total here. And my first lean is actually going to be leaning towards the over 38 and a half. I wouldn't mind kind of teasing this down and then maybe going Jets money line or something or uh, that type of thing. But just a total in general with this this number at 38 and a half. I don't mind the idea of over. Now, we've seen uh, the Patriots in their two games here uh, so far, one against the Bengals and one against the Seahawks. Their offense honestly didn't look all that terrible. They covered, uh, you know, nearly the first half of this number 30 and half in game number one scoring 16 and then they did cover the first half of this number in game number two they scored 20 in a 20 20 uh, 23 to 20 loss to the Seahawks the Jets same same kind of thing 19 points in week number one a loss to the uh, 49ers but scoring 24 last week uh, against Tennessee so I don't mind the idea of this being a game that finishes maybe around the 42 mark or something like that, which would put it over. The real precipice of this is twofold. I think that this Jets, off, Jets offense is going to start kind of falling into form. We saw 19 points in week one. We saw 24 points in week number two. Um, Aaron Rodgers completes 13 passes. Then he completes 18 passes. Brees Hall's getting going. Like, I think it's taking maybe a couple weeks here for this Aaron Rodgers-led offense to kind of click. And, you know, they went up against a uh, good defense in the 49ers. They went up against in what I guess you could consider as a fair defense in Tennessee and have only put up more and more points. Two weeks, I get it, but this is a Patriots defense um, that is good. But when you look at the DVOA numbers, so um, obviously that's kind of varying the opponents and everything like that, and it adjusts it. Uh, neither one of these defense is all that spectacular. The Patriots kind of middle of the pack, and then the Jets, honestly, in the lower to mid-bottom third of the entire league. And this is supposed to be a very good defensive team. So I think that's the narrative that's being thrown around, which is why this total is down at 38 and a half. Um, but overall, I think these offenses should be able to match it, and we should be able to get um, you know, 239 points. So main lean in this one's going to be that over 38 and a half. Keep an eye on the pin comment. See if we do lock it down and do roll with it ourselves. I'm going to kind of want to see where this line moves and everything like that. So far, We've seen it at 39 and a half, and it's moved all the way down to 38. Got to 37 and a half for a second. Now back up to 38 and a half. I'd love now knowing that it's out there at 37 and a half. I'd love to see a 37 and a half roll around again. So yeah, gonna lean towards the over 38 and a half again. To sum it up, I think this Jets offense is gonna get better and better. And Jets defensively, I think they're a huge cog in this line. Their DVOA numbers are actually pretty piss poor, both against the pass and the run. So I don't think the Patriots offense is gonna look as bad as maybe some might say. I think their team total line is at like 15 and a half. I think they can get to like 17 points, that type of thing. Not necessarily one of my leans, but point just uh, using that in the point of argument for and over here. Now, if we were to talk about the spread, I already mentioned it. I might do some sort of teaser or same game parlay where we lower that total and hammer the Jets on the money line um, because I do think that this Jets team is better than the Patriots, though the defense hasn't looked it yet and, uh, you know, Reddick being out and I get it. Um, and also, though, the offense hasn't fully looked like it's clicked their ceiling seems to be a little bit higher than the Patriots. Right now, the Patriots seem to be playing at their ceiling. 
and I say this as a Patriots fan, like the first two weeks, yes, they're just one and one, but no one really called that first week uh, win against the Bengal, right? And then, yes, Patriots fan, maybe even the NFL world were a little bit higher on them in week number two. They almost win that one. But even to compete like that and put up 20 points, I don't think is necessarily their norm. So uh, I do think while the Patriots are playing decent football right now, and you might look at this as a little bit more head to head than some think, I think the Jets are kind of going this way and the Patriots, you know, maybe they'll go this way. I'm not saying they're going to crash and burn. This is a hopeful team compared to last year, but I just don't see them getting much much better, especially in prime time against Aaron Rodgers here. So I'll lean towards the Jets minus the six and a half points. It is within the touchdown, but I, I'd probably, if I were to roll with this or even either one of these, I might look at like Jets money line and then the total knock down uh, a score or so to be able to get some decent odds here if we were to roll with that with some sort of a same game parlay. But guys, before we do get into some player props, I have three player props or three players that I'm kind of focusing on here. I want to talk to you guys about Underdog Fantasy. They have multiple discounts going on right now. Free pick for new users if you sign up today or before the game. You're going to get Aaron Rodgers 0.5 total yards. He can run for it. He can pass for it. You're going to get that free square to add into one of your slips. You're also going to get up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus when signing up and depositing over there. And then, oh, even existing customers. CD Lamb free square. So if you are a new user, you're going to get two free squares. If you're an existing user, Go ahead and hammer that CD Lamb Square, right? If you don't know what Underdog Fantasy is, it is a player prop app in which you combine two or more players into a slip, essentially their version of a parlay. You pick more or less based on their projection. So for these two, we're definitely saying more than 0.5 total yards. And the more you win, you more the more you get paid out. I love Underdog. We're posting a lot of Underdog slips. Go ahead and check it out, guys. That link is in the pinned comment. So right by the plays in the pinned comment, top of the comment section of this video. It's also in the description if you have trouble finding it there. But uh, all right, I want to jump in to a few player props here. I've actually already bet one of them. So one of these you're going to see in the pin comment. It is already locked in. And it's actually going to be a play that has not cashed yet. Aaron Rodgers over 20 and a half pass completions. Right now, plus 102 on Caesars. You're getting plus money on MGM. I believe it was plus money on DraftKings earlier. 365 also plus money, but Plus 102 is as good as we've seen it here. And I like the idea that you could see the books are kind of confused here. Um, by the minute, it's going, you know, 314, 19 and a half. One minute later, 20 and a half. Five minutes later, back down to 19. Now we have a couple hours wait, goes up to 20 and a half. Um, so I like the idea that they've been pricing it at 19 and a half, right? Um, meaning if he goes out there and, and does 20, it'll cash. But uh, what's the difference between 20 and 21? Just one completion. But one thing I like and one thing I will note here is the fact that the Patriots completion against to start the year here sixth worst in the entire league pass attempts against 28th so only the fourth um, you know fourth worst over there what why am I not going pass attempts when we see that number because if the Jets are up and winning I think it's going to take 21 Aaron Rodgers completions right so we get that plus money there and he doesn't need to throw the ball throw the ball throw the ball as part of a game script he can just go in there and you know complete 21 passes early in the fourth quarter and then they can get back to the running and running and running his pass attempts up at 30 and a half do I hate it not necessarily but obviously even in a game in which they had to rely on him uh, a lot late in the game there, 30 pass attempts against Tennessee. He only completed 18. So I like the idea of even if he goes up over this or stays at this 30 number, that he can complete nearly 66% of his pass uh, passes out there because, again, the Patriots uh, are allowing 74% completion to opposing quarterbacks. Um, and he hit, this the, he hit this playing the Patriots a while back on Green Bay, but uh, that's neither here nor there as it's a whole new team. The one thing I'll also note here is the fact that um, the two quarterbacks Quarterbacks that have played the Patriots so far, excuse me, with that scene change there. Two Patriot uh, quarterbacks against have been Joe Burrow and Geno Smith. Joe Burrow completes 21 passes in obviously a game in which I don't necessarily know if, if you know, that was even that great of a Joe Burrow game, obviously. He was only 21 of 29, uh, didn't have a passing touchdown, didn't look all that great. And then you have Geno Smith go out there and complete 33 passes. Aaron Rodgers... Should be better than that version of Joe Burrow and is better than Geno Smith. So uh, I really don't mind the idea of him going out there and completing 21 passes. The next one up is actually going to be taking a peek here. Jump back into this screen. And by the way, guys, this is Outlier. It's my favorite player prop research tool. You can go through and look at games as well, seeing where the money is and all that. But I love their player prop screen. You can see all of the Aaron Rodgers props here because I have a filter to him. But you can make your own filters. You can go through um, and just be able to dig in. Now, reminder, Stevenson, this is not the play. Play, but this is an example of one that is trending and you can see the red and green the one that I like here is going to be Alan Lazard over two and a half receptions I've already kicked around the idea of receiving yards touchdowns 
and receptions for him uh, because the Patriots struggle, one, against the wide receiver. They're leading the league in terms of most receptions allowed to wide receivers this season, 32nd. Um, but one thing I'll say is that the n- wide receiver number two, so Alan Lazard's position here, uh, whether it's wide receiver two or three, a.k.a. not the primary receiver, um, which is obviously Garrett Wilson, have been doing really well against the Patriots in terms of a defensive DVOA perspective of them against that wide receiver two or wide receiver three. They have Gonzalez in a pretty good defense, but after that, it's up to you know Jones and, and company to be able to uh, hammer home the, the lockdown of Lazard and even Mike Williams in this case. Lazard's been playing a lot of snaps, which we like to see uh, as well, um, so I like him over there. Now, we want more of a week one type of vibe from him. We had nine targets, six receptions. Week number two, we only had four targets, so even if we kind of split the difference there, based on what he's catching at a 60% catch rate, um, say he gets six targets, he should be able to go out there and snag three balls, right? So I like his over two and a half. I think you're getting good value um, right now, kind of in the mi- mid mi- minus 120s, um, but I don't mind his yards. Uh, I don't mind even his touchdown look, which is plus 240. He caught two in week one, but um, I, des- I definitely don't mind that. But again, this is kind of focusing on the fact that the Patriots have struggled against uh, the non-primary receivers. We've seen them shut down, um, you know, Chase, and then even, I guess you could say DK Metcalf had a really good game against them, but uh, Smith and Jigba went out there and had a really good game, right? So I'm hoping that Alan Lazard is the the Smith and Jigba sort of uh, spot here. Um, and then our last play, going to be taking a peek at Brees Hall, over 29 and a half for his receiving yards. Uh, we saw Zach Charbonnet of the Seahawks go out there and do this. We saw a combo of Moss and Brown have a decent amount of receiving yards as well against the Patriots. You can see they're allowing the 25th most, kind of middle of the pack when it comes to the running back position, but this is a guy that's getting plenty of looks. Um, he's had six targets and eight targets. He's catching all but one of those in both of their games here in 39 and 52 so far in his total, and this also kind of correlates right to what I was saying about Aaron Rodgers. If he goes out there and his reception line is set at four and a half and it's pretty much a pick him, right? Um, he said five and seven. If he goes out there and catches five plus passes, one, I love the idea of him being able to take all of those for 29 and a half going over, right? But doesn't that help out the Aaron Rodgers uh, play as well here um, just in general? So, I like the idea of these two kind of being correlated because the easiest completions that he's going to come across are going to be those little check down plays to Brees Hall and whatnot. So uh, to recap there, I do like the over. If I had to make a pick on the spread, I don't know if I'm going to get there or have the cojones to pull the trigger myself, but I don't mind the the Jets here minus the six and a half. May throw in a same game parlay that massages those numbers and works uh, together with them. So keep an eye on that. But then from a player prop perspective, I'm loving Aaron Rodgers. In fact, I already locked it in. So that'll be in the pin common. Aaron Rodgers over 20 and a half complete for plus on 102. Then I like Alan Lazard some way, shape, or form. I'm starting to lean towards his receptions over two and a half. And then I really do like Brees Hall's over 29 and a half receiving yards. Um, again, this is a Patriots team that is really good at taking away key weapons. Um, but this Jets team, you know, who's the key weapon? If you're going to focus on Garrett Wilson, then I like Brees Hall and um, Lazard out of one, the backfield, and then two out of, say, the slot or the number two spot, right? If you take away, you know, either one of Lazard or, say, you take away Garrett Wilson, I think Brees Hall is going to have even better of a passing, um, you know, catching type of a day. So, yeah, I think that these all sort of correlate to one another. It's kind of the Graham's game script that I have followed there. But guys, yeah, go check out Outlier again. That screen that I was showing you guys for player props research and all that. Green means good. Red means bad. That is going to be linked in the pinned comment as well. You get seven days free there. So go check out Underdog. You're going to get those free squares and all of that uh, deposit bonus cash. And if you check out Outlier, it's going to help you win over on Underdog to be able to put some great and valuable player props into your slip. But keep an eye on the pinned comment. Uh, appreciate all of the support on these NFL videos to start the season. We're having a really good year, up 13 units through two weeks, which you gotta say uh, is crazy. But I also have to mention that it's because of week number one, right? Um, but still good to have a little bit of a cushion after a killer week number one. Let's keep the momentum going here. If you made it this far in the video, please go ahead and comment 14. Let's me know that you stuck around through all the blabbering and the gibberish and the dumminess. Appreciate the hell out of you guys. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.